Hi, I'm Miranda Lowe and I work at the Natural History Museum in South Kensington in London. My name's Chris Sharp. I'm the Assistant Community Curator at Leeds Industrial Museum. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm Director of Collections, Programme and Learning here at Harewood House Trust, which is just a few miles outside the centre of Leeds. We're a historic house set in an 18th century landscape with a bird garden, so we're an unusual mixture of things. I'm Lucy Moore. I'm one of the projects curators at Leeds Museums and Galleries. Um, we're here at the Discovery Centre, which is our store. Um, and first of all, I wanted to say um, a really big thank you uh, for asking me to come in and uh, answer some questions. Leeds City Council collection is a collection that belongs to the people. Uh, my job is making sure that people can access these objects, this collection, this shared history on their own terms and in their own way for their own benefit. How museums choose to display things um, is an interesting question. Um, my job being a community curator means that I often work with people when we are making decisions about what to display. Um, the collection in Leeds um, dictates that all the objects we have have a strong connection to the city. Um, this can include connections to the people from the city. Um, objects are often made here, used here. So sometimes I will co-curate an exhibition with members of the community. Um, we would work together to, to choose objects, whether they be on loan from people or whether they be objects that already belong to the museums. Um, and we would draw from those to, to tell the stories um, that we've decided as a partnership to tell. We collect new objects for, for the museum's collection. We've currently got approaching one and a half million objects in, in Leeds museums and galleries, um, but it is my role to make sure that we continue to add to that. My role here is about the care and display of the collection here in the house and putting on exhibitions and also working with schools and communities too in, as part of our remit as an educational charity. In terms of what we display here at Harewood, it is the contents that have been collected by the family that built the house, the Lassels family. These have been collected over nearly 250 years, so there's a lot of them. We show them within the rooms in the house rather than a more museum style setting with lots of different cases. And traditionally, it's curators that decide what goes out and more importantly, perhaps nowadays, how they're interpreted as well. Before, there used to be a real assumed knowledge on the part of visitors that people knew what was good or there were certain things that were good. Nowadays, we're very much more interested as curators in hearing what people think about what they see. It's a myth that actually somewhere like this was liked by everybody when it was first built. In actual fact, what we found when we researched the 18th century visitors to Harewood, that a lot of them didn't like it. They thought it was really flash and, and too full on for them. Historically, it's been quite led by the individual. So you might have a curator who has a particular interest that informs how the collection is shaped and then that informs what they as an individual choose to put on display. I think it's fair to say that some of that still happens in museums around the country. Um, but I think increasingly we want to work in a much more collaborative way with people um, we want to work towards models of co-curation um, and we want people uh, wherever they are whether it's in Leeds or in a different part of the country uh, to feel that they their voice has um, space and has the right to be part of our exhibitions um, how do we physically make choices there are uh, practical aspects like can this thing be displayed um, is it ethical is it safe um, is it uh, something that will keep the integrity of the object together, i.e. will the object break if we move it? Um, so that is always one concern. Um, but I think also we increasingly want to make displays that are as relevant as they possibly can be uh, to what's going on in people's lives today. Um, and I think that is our, increasingly our methodology of uh, what are people's fears and worries and hopes and dreams uh, and how can we uh, use our collections to sustain those interests. I'm a principal curator there looking after some of the natural history collections behind the scenes. So I look after things that can be um, pickled in jars such as um, animal specimens, corals, jellyfish, 
lobsters, crabs, but we also have um, botanical specimens, so things pressed on sheets. Um, so there's a, like, a variety of things that can be displayed at any point in time. And I'm also really interested in the hidden narrative, hidden histories of how some of these specimens, plants and animals were actually collected. So therefore, I like to tease out more diverse narratives, in particular about um, black people and people of color. Um, so in terms of how the choices are made for anything to be on display, in a large national museum, such as the Natural History Museum, we actually have an exhibition team, um, whereas in some of the smaller um, museums in the UK, they may not have um, an uh, exhibition team in particular. They may have um, a curator that does everything concerning an exhibition from the ideas, the narratives, the specimens, those kind of choices from start to finish. But in a na national, you have an exhibition team that sometimes work together as a team. They come up with um, the storyline, the theme, the and sometimes even the title of an exhibition, and then um, put out to tender to actually get an exhibition designer in, and then work through um, several ide further ideas and processes. And then at some point throughout that um, meth methodology, they will come to a curator such as myself and present those ideas and stories and things of how far they've got and look for um, the particular specimens to see whether I or another curator might have that in our collection. And um, if we don't, then the idea might be to source them from other museums um, in the UK or, or more widely um, internationally. Um, sometimes there is the opportunity for the curator to input ideas and suggest um, different storylines and different specimens for display. Um, and ultimately, um, the, the kind of like the sign off process within a national museum would um, kind of lie with a, another board within the museum. So there is um, kind of quite um, a hierarchical process and whereas within a regional museum it might be less hierarchical because of um, a reduced number of staff that are working on an exhibition at any point in time. Um, there are um, other methods of choosing items for display and the stories around them by working with um, communities um, to, to bring in um, more diverse voices, um, um, voices of people who have lived in experiences of, um, in terms of culturally understanding these objects, specimens and items as well. And that might come through a community engagement team that would um, bring in that community to have workshops with the exhibition team as well. Um, I myself like to bring in multiple narratives, multiple perspectives, and I work very collaboratively across my own organisation. And it would be wonderful to see more of that in a lot of our um, cultural institutions. Um, in terms of Black Lives Matter and keeping um, um, that um, narrative as a priority, um, it be that museums and galleries work more um, with researchers and students that actually study um, black history because um, their work should complement anything that we put on display and um, any of the objects that we choose as well. So I think by forming um, closer and better um, and more sustained relationships with um, researchers and students, that would go some way to keeping um, Black Lives Matter narratives as a priority within everything that we do within these institutions. Because 
at the end of the day, I feel that it's the culture within that needs to change to help inform what institutions do and how we get more diverse audiences um, within these institutions to actually visit, feel comfortable to visit and um, to have more intergenerational conversations too around that, that that would help because um, it's not just one person's history, it's everybody's history. And I At the present, uh, me and the, the other members of the community team are collecting responses to the coronavirus pandemic um, and how that's affected people. And we're also collecting uh, people's experiences, um, their thoughts, their feelings, their involvement with the Black Lives Matter movement. It's really our job to make sure that that the collection that Leeds has continues to represent uh, the people of Leeds. Um, and the best way for me to make sure people enjoy visiting their museums in the city um, is to make sure that, that the collections that we have um, do reflect the audiences that, that we that we want to come in, which is everybody. To, to compartmentalise history into different sections makes no sense at all to me. Um, I work in an industrial museum, but I don't have a particular um, interest or leaning towards industrial history. Um, I find history itself fascinating. And the stories that you can tell around industrial history um, are not just the stories of machines. When we're talking about telling the stories and the experiences of black people. Um, those stories are part of a shared history. They're, they're part of the history of all of us. You cannot separate industrial history from black history. Um, they, are, they are entwined and the enslaving of people and the, the way that the profits of that were used um, to propel uh, in the industrial revolution in this country and across the world um, are inseparable. And so to tell one story without the other um, isn't to give the full picture. And it's our responsibility in museums to tell an honest and full story. Museums aren't neutral. If we were to visit or to have been able to visit a museum a hundred years ago, it could be using the same objects we're using now to tell very different stories. Um, and I would say the same of 10 years ago or potentially even five years ago. Um, where we are in the next five, 10 and a hundred years does depend on the young people um, entering the, the entering the sector. Uh, the stories we tell in museums are the stories that that people tell. Um, any institution isn't a thing. Um, institutions are made of people, and it's those people that direct um, those institutions. Um, and, and in the case of museums, it's it's the people that work in museums that make the decisions. Um, for us to have a fully and properly representative museum sector um, in this city and in this country, we need a more diverse workforce. The perspective that any story is told from is it comes from the person telling that story. Um, I can work with people from diverse backgrounds to tell their stories, um, but it's those people that need to tell their stories. Colonialism um, and black history have been sorely lacking um, in, as, as part of the narrative in museums in general, in my opinion, for a long time. Um, what the Black Lives Matter movement made clear, um, and, and for me personally made clear, was that it's no longer good enough to, to, to not do anything. And as a museum, we are... Um, we have a responsibility to tell the truth. And that includes telling colonial stories from the perspective of enslaved peoples, um, from the perspective of native peoples around the world. Um, it includes telling the stories of working class people. And these are all stories that we need to be telling. It's all part of a shared history. So we're very keen to get a lot of different perspectives here at Harewood rather than just our own. To tell the whole story of a place needs a lot of people and a lot of perspectives, diverse perspectives, to tell that story properly. And that's particularly important here at Harewood, given our history. And of course, the most fundamental thing about Harewood and the first thing that anybody should know about it is the fact that it was built on the profits of the enslavement of people of colour. The Lassells family from the 18th century 
They actually owned plantations, ships, warehouses, which were all dependent on slavery. And that is what actually enabled this room and the whole house to be built in 1771. Shockingly, very few curators are people of colour. It's something that the sector knows it needs to address, but has not been very successful in doing that yet. That's an aim of Harewood. We have three different groups that we that are working groups that look across the whole business at how we employ people, how we go about finding out finding people to work with from diverse backgrounds. Um, working with artists of colour, we know that we need and we want a more diverse group of perspectives at the house rather than just our own. Because as curators, whether you intend to or not, you always bring your own perspective and your own lived experience to how you talk and how you communicate about things. Although Black Lives Matter uh, in the press seems to have tailed off, in actual fact, in organisations like Harewood, although we seem quite quiet at the moment, a lot of discussion has been going on. We've been reaching out to a lot of people um, externally and thinking about what sort of change needs to happen and how we make that happen. A real cultural shift in terms of how we look after our collections, what we show and how we talk about them. So rather than just some knee-jerk reaction that happens and then it's done and then it's over, this is much more about changing how we work forever. My immediate uh, want is to reassure you that just because um, our social media posts might have uh, come to an end, that doesn't mean that uh, change has stopped. I think lots of organisations, ours included, um, are looking towards much more uh, change within, within the institution. Um, we know that as curators and as individuals and people who work in this sector, that we have a lot of self-education to do, and we are actively trying to do that together at Leeds. Um, but we also know that some of our policies and practices um, are not as inclusive as they should be, and certainly not as inclusive as they could be. Uh, so there are a number of initiatives underway at the moment to change those. Um, I, so, although you might not see the outward um, effect of it, uh, there is a lot that we're that we're trying to achieve. Um, it's not just one person's history; it's everybody's history, and I feel young people have a really important role to play in the future of museums. They are the future of museums. They are the ones that are often at the forefront of culture, what's going on in society. Um, and they should be the ones that um, are inspired to contribute in many ways through immerse, immersive experiences, um, more creative interventions, um, maybe the definition of the, of what is a museum needs to change what is the role of the curator um might change in future because of young people um and it would also be great to have more people that actually look like me that work with me and others and um, having a lot of um, um creative allyship within museums would be great to have people that um have lived in experiences in multiple aspects that can contribute and feel comfortable with that contribution as well and to be recognised for it also. So I think young people are the future, they're future advocates of the planet and um, have a lot to give to our society. So I encourage all cultural institutions to work with the younger generation. And that requires the involvement of people like yourselves, young people, the next generation. You are the ones who have really pushed the agenda on a whole range of issues that are important in society today, whether it's about inclusion, whether it's about the environment, you are the ones that are making the difference. And finally, people are listening. Next year, we are going to start three new strands of programming, for example, here at Harewood. 
which will involve opportunities to talk about black history, individuals from history up to the present day, and to tell their individual stories, and also opportunities to work with artists of colour and also curators of colour, so that their perspectives are actually shown within the house. We are also having our Hayward Biennial next year, which focuses on craft and design. And it's a shocking fact that 96% of professional full-time makers are white. This is something that we want to use Hayward as a platform to talk about, and as well as our overall theme for the exhibition, which is about regeneration and use of materials and uh, creating the things that we live with in a responsible way with the resources available to us from an environmental point of view. We also want to, through our learning programme, with our symposium, but also through the choice of makers that we work with, to bring to the forefront this lack of um, diversity within craft. When we're working on displays and exhibitions um, and when we're collecting objects, this includes a lot of young people. Um, I have colleagues that work um, regularly with groups of uh, small groups of young volunteers, they're young people aged um, up to 24 um, who are involved in making their own exhibitions. They, they choose, direct, um, implement um, the themes, the objects, the stories that they want to tell. Museums are a constantly evolving sector. Young people from diverse backgrounds entering the museum sector now would ensure that, that diverse stories will continue to be told. And I hope to see a, a more diverse sector in the future. So in terms of what you could do um, and how you make a difference, we would just ask that you consider bringing your voice to organisations like ourselves. All of society needs to be represented within heritage and currently it isn't. If you have time to have a work placement with us, come and find out about us, talk to us, find out about a career potentially within the sector, or even just come and visit and give us your feedback about what you think needs to change. Those are the things that will really enable us to create the sort of cultural change in collaboration um, with a more diverse community and the community that we seek to represent because this does belong to everybody. It's a place for everyone in Leeds and the surrounding area. So if you'd like to get in touch, please do. My email can be uh, got from anybody at Geraldine Connor Foundation. So do get in touch. And in the meantime, thanks a lot for inviting me to be part of Represent. I hope you have a great day and take care. Ideally, it would be one of you stood here giving this film in a few years time. Um, please come and work in our sector, please come and uh, be part of uh, being, being a change. Um, but until then, um, until you've all got my job, um, <laughs> please um, put pressure on us, you know, write in a visitor book, you know, send us an email, say, I didn't like how you did that display, that di didn't represent me, didn't represent my age, my community. Um, tell us, um, we have lots of schemes like formal and informal, get involved with one of them if you want and if you have capacity and time. But even if you don't, just tell us. You know, we always try and respond and we want other people's voices um, to be part of the conversations that we're having. Um, so please, um, yeah, just tell us what you think, particularly if it's something that we're not doing well. Thanks. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.